there, you know, he's dead. And I had that in me so bad, so it took a lot of college, a lot of reading out aloud to get, you know, where I got to. And I didn't make it to radio. I didn't get a job in radio, so I did radio in San Francisco for like 17 years. You know, I made it on the air. But it took a lot of school, a lot of rehearsal, a lot of reading out aloud. Well, I, it influenced me a lot. You know, I could never see myself having lived my life after working on the plantations and living out here in Vashery. I I would have been crazy. I, I just, the Bay Area just offered me so much more to do, so many more places to go, you know, stuff to do, things to see, different cultures. You know, I only had one one way out here in Vashery. You know, all the time I've been there, it was in my mind since I was young, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to find my daddy, you know, and I did find him, it was too late, he had passed away, but I found out who he was and got to know my brother, so I did exactly, exactly my grandmother used to, when I used to ask her about, you know, will I ever find my dad, and she, she said, God can do anything, just believe in God. God can do anything. I'm here as a witness. God can do anything. <laughs> my one man show is basically my whole story of growing up in Vasher and the story I just told about joining the Black Panther Party and being in the Civil Rights Movement. It got, has the uh, poems about the characters I created in Vasher. It's a whole combination of me leaving Vashery, leaving New Orleans, and going to California. So it's basically the story I just told you, with everything in it, poems, and, and I don't know, I, I don't know whether I'll do it again. I probably will, I, I must think about it, just put a new twist on it, or just add a second part to it. Yeah, it was, it was a whole process of putting it together. I worked with a great director, he just passed away maybe three months ago by the name of John Doyle in Oakland. And he helped me a lot and I had a guitar player and John did the, the directing and it came together, it was fun. I did it like one, maybe five times in Oakland, did it in Berkeley, a couple other places I did it. And, uh, it was fun doing it for like for about almost two years it ran and it was a totally different experience other than slam because it's just you and, and like I say I may do it again, I'm not sure. Those are songs I remember from you know, all the way back from my younger days. And those was like songs from like Big Joe Turner, Guitar Slim and back there in the days, you know, Fats Domino. So those songs I had in my head already, and I knew a few lines. But other, whatever line is sung in the song, that's that's all I know. <laughs> I love doing haiku. It was one of my favorite uh, form of expression. You know, I I love haikus. I have a lot of haikus in the book that's coming out too. I got it. At least maybe at least over thirty haikus, and I love them because they all you can tell such a amazing story in seventeen syllables. And I'll keep writing. One day I'm gonna win a haiku championship. I keep trying. You ask me about strategy. If I knew about strategy, I never would have lost and slay out the haiku battle because I don't know strategy and be the haiku coach. Maybe I'll hire a coach next, next time. Maybe I'll get you, you a champion. Maybe I'll hire you to, to coach me. Well, when Jan McKinney started, uh, when he did, first started Tourette's Without Regrets, which is one of the largest poetry reading in the Bay Area right now in Oakland, Tourette's Without Regrets. And Jamie invented the uh, dirty haiku battle. That's why I got so many dirty haikus, and I thought it was so much fun, and we had so much fun doing, battling, doing dirty haikus, and 
from then I started writing them. It's a collection of all stuff, a lot of short stories. A lot, a lot of people have heard my poems. You know, a lot of people, some of my poems they haven't heard, but I don't think nobody really read my short stories yet. So it's going to be something for the, my old fans and my new fans, you know. It's a, it's a collection, it's a mixture. I even got stuff when I drove a taxi cab in San Francisco. I got stories from the taxi cab. I got a lot of stories about Oakland, San Francisco, and L.A. too. Because I don't have writing that to throw away writing. All my stuff goes in my book. Everything I write, you know, that's why I say it takes so long to do a piece. I, I'm not the type of person who just write a piece in a day or two. Or this, it, I just wrote this overnight. No, it took me a lot of time to write these pieces. And, you know, I figured most, most of them are good. Well, you know, their score is good anyway. I mean, you won't have anything to do with slam poetry. But, you know, I just take, put so much effort and time in my work. So, you know, and I got enough where the book is like maybe 120 pages. You know, I'm still deciding on the title. It was called, at one time it was called Freedom, you know. Uh, freedom Story Poetry from Fashion, Louisiana to Hollywood, California. Poems that made me what I am made me a slam, whatever, you know. But it's going to be poems from here in Vashry all the way out to Hollywood. I always say Hollywood because I had did my very first feature on Hollywood Boulevard. Very first time I featured at a poetry reading was Hollywood Boulevard. Everybody needs poetry, man. What, what's something that's saying about it? You get, get your news from poetry. You know? There's something to say that's saying about that. But I don't know. I just see the people who that come to a slam or some performers for the first time and how much they appreciate it the first time they hear it. You know, they didn't even know they liked poetry that well until they went on stage and you know, see somebody at a slam. A lot of people, I've taken them to slam. And they want to come back, so I think poetry is wonderful for everybody. You know, even the kids. We do. I do workshop in middle school. They love it. Elementary school. You know, never did a workshop where the kid didn't fall in love with the poetry. And a lot of times we do the what you we call it the bad children's school. <laughs> you know, the children that can't go to public school. They're too bad for public school. And we, I, you know, do workshops in those stacks of schools, and they be loving it. Uh, it was a long time ago. I wrote it for my girlfriend I was staying with that time, and it was before I even learned to write, before I, you know, took any lessons, any classes, or something was going. Went something like, you are a rose, just. No, uh, you are you are like a rose, so pretty, so perfect, so soon. It's like 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 the rose has something that has always a thorn. And I said oh, that's a poem, and I never you know really forgot it. Well, I, I don't really remember it all the way, but I when I read, wrote that before I started writing, I just figured I had something that I can do for as poetry concerned. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe hopefully I'll be able to go to an island and just kick back. I, that's my next dream, you know, just go out to uh, St. Lucia. That's the one I got on my mind. You go kick that. You kind of enjoy life for a while. Uh, you know, I've been performing. I don't really have to do this. But I do a lot for just the, the slam, the poetry community. You know, and I like going to tell stories for the old people. Uh, I say the old people, you know, and uh, like the, not nursing home, you know, these retirement homes and stuff. But I like bringing poetry to, to them. You know, I work hard sometimes at this art, and actually I don't really need to work. I just come here by my boy Pickle, I'll sit here and drink his all made wine and go fishing. I don't really need to work, but 
I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Something on this and on the horizon. Who knows? I might see the air I want to do. Whatever comes. I just get a good feeling. Just, I'm at home. You know, I, well, I live in New Orleans, but you know, my mother always did live in New Orleans, so I have been uh, been going to New Orleans like forever since I was a kid. But New Orleans is not really home. This is home. When I come to Vashry, I feel like home. That, you know what they say? Home is the place where they have to take you in when you come. This is home. You gotta take me in. I know I'm welcome here.